Reading a story is like scaling a humongous mountain. We all want to reach the top. We want to see the story from different angles or different perspectives. Most especially, we want to enjoy every detail of the story. What makes a story pointy? What makes it really, really interesting? My name is Teacher Mark Alegre. Welcome again to another English language arts lesson. Today, we are going to focus on plot diagram, setting, and conflict. Let's discuss two points. First, the definition of plot. Second, the parts of Freytag's plot pyramid. Under that, we'll have setting and conflict. Let's begin. What is a plot? Plot is the organized pattern or sequence of events that make up a story. Every plot is made up of a series of events that are connected to one another. We have important keywords here. We have organized, sequence of events or a series of events, and most importantly, connected. Let's have a short background of plot structure. In 350 BCE, Greek philosopher Aristotle wrote in his book Poetics, The Unified Plot Structure of Drama. According to him, we can picture out the story in just a triangle. In the lower left, we call that protesis or the introduction. The pointy part, we call that epistasis or crisis. And the lower right, we call that catastrophe or the resolution. Someone modified Aristotle's plot structure. His name was Gustav Freytag, a German novelist. He added two more essential parts and he named it after himself, Freytag's Plot Pyramid. What are these essential parts? We have exposition, rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution. Let's discuss each part. The exposition or introduction is the part of the work that introduces the following characters, setting, and basic situation. Again, exposition, we learn about characters, setting, and basic situation. I'd like to focus more on the setting. Setting is a time and place of the story. It includes the year, the time of the day, even the weather. Places can be a specific country, state, region, neighborhood, institution, or home. Details such as dialects, clothing, customs, and even mode of transportation are used to establish a setting. In most stories, the setting serves as a backdrop, a context in which characters interact. Setting can also help to create a feeling or atmosphere, which we call the mood. In The Hunger Games, especially the first part of The Hunger Games, the arena is the most popular setting, right? That's where the characters fought and interacted with each other in order to survive. The events in the story become complicated. The conflict is revealed. The problem is introduced. As a result of the conflict, the protagonist faces a problem or is working toward a goal. Conflict is the struggle between opposing forces. There are two types of conflict. We have internal and external. Internal takes place within the mind of a character. External, the character struggles against some outside force. Under internal, we have person versus self. The character may lack confidence or ability. He or she may have to make a very difficult decision or he or she may have to address a personal problem. Under external, we have person versus person. The central character clashes with another character. For example, Kiko and William competed for the same role in the school play. We can see that Kiko and William, the two characters, clash with each other, right? Aside from that, we also have person versus society. The main character challenges a law, tradition, or institution. The character may battle against the forces that represent these institutions. For example, Annalise, a black lawyer, refuses to move to the back of the bus 
because of her skin color. We can see that a person, Annalise, um, tries to challenge a social issue, which is discrimination. Next, we have person versus nature. The main character fights to endure or overcome forces of nature. He or she struggles to survive harsh elements, navigates through a disaster, or meets his or her basic needs. For instance, we have Lisa's family hid in the basement last night because of the tornado. So it's obvious that the nature here is the tornado. Lastly, under external, we have person versus technology. The main character resists technological forces, may battle rouge robots or hostile computers, or characters may just struggle to accept or use technology of a changing world. Example, Rosa fought the vending machine to get back her dollar. We can see that Rosa had a problem with the vending machine here, which is part of technology. IMAX is the turning point, which is the most suspenseful or emotional moment of the story. This is what we are all waiting for, the climax, the peak of the story. Next to climax is the falling action. Events that occur in the falling action are the after effects or consequences of the climax. Actions and dialogue lead the reader to the story's logical conclusion. Resolution is the final outcome of the events in the story. The story ends in a situation that has evolved from the protagonist's success or failure to achieve the goal or eliminate the problem. So here is the end of the story. Before we end this video, I have two questions for you. What have you noticed? Why do you think it's presented this way? Why do you think the plot structure is presented that way? That's it for today. Again, my name is Teacher Mark. I hope you learned something from our lesson today. See you!